you are love is kind you are love is patient you feel my heart with so much peace and joy You are amazing You make my life feel brand new You are amazing You make my life feel brand new Jesus you love me too much oh too much oh too much oh excess love oh Jesus you love me too much oh too much oh too much oh excess love oh Your love is kind Your love is patient You fill my heart With so much peace and joy You are a my life feel brand new all your promises are yes and amen you are not a man you never lie jesus you love me too much oh too much oh too much to oh, excess love oh. Jesus you love me too much oh. too much oh, too much to oh, excess love oh. all your promises are yes and amen You are not a man you never lie Your love is kind Your love is patient You feel my heart With so much peace You are amazing You make my life feel brand new All your promises are yes and amen You are not a man you never lie Jesus you love me too much oh too much oh too much oh excess love oh Jesus you love me too much oh too much oh too much to oh, excess love oh. Jesus you love me too much oh. too much oh. too much to oh, excess love oh. Jesus you love me too much oh. too much oh. Too much to oh, excess love oh. Father I want to thank you for giving me yet another Sunday 
that I will be able to minister and to serve the people of this nation, the nation of Kenya. And I want to thank you because it is not only the nation of Kenya, but even it is outside the nation of Kenya and in this world. Father God, wherever my listeners and my viewers are watching me from, I pray that grace will connect them, grace will serve them, grace will minister to them, and grace will fight all their battles in the name of Jesus Christ. Anoint me as I speak your word, give me your utterance, and let your word be sharper than any two-edged sword that is going to penetrate the hearts of men, is going to divide, and it is going to make them to be one. And it is in Jesus Christ I pray and believe. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much. I welcome you on board. Chariots of Fire uh, Ministry, this, this commission is a good platform for you to learn and even for me to learn, even as I teach you by the grace of God. Amen. I want to acknowledge all of you that have been standing with me with your monies and also with your comments and sharing my YouTube, uh, my YouTube and also subscribing and also joining me on Facebook and the School of Mentorship. May the good God bless you. And as you watch, as you listen to me and view this platform, may the God that I serve always answer you each time you watch in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you so much and I'm grateful for you. Amen. Now, we are still dealing with, um, we are dealing with how to destroy altars and I was able to speak to you that you must repent. You can be, you are a Christian, you need to repent. We have people that are coming to church, they are not born again. We said it is good also to receive Christ because you cannot fight a battle, a spiritual battle, if you are not also a child of the covenant. Glory be to God. Now, today I want us to look at the third one, and I pray this third one will be a blessing to you. And this is raising an altar. You, when you destroy an altar, I will show you how to raise an altar. How to raise an altar, I will tell to you. But first I want us to know, how do you raise altars? Where? Where do you need to raise altars? You have already destroyed them. Sometimes you have not destroyed them because it is good to have an altar before you destroy any altar so that the altar can fight for you. Connect yourself to an altar. Connect yourself to a prophet that has an altar, a prophet that will stand in the gap for you so that you can be able to destroy altars. Never destroy altars without connection and never destroy altars without knowing who is who because by the hand of a prophet, the Israelites were delivered by the hand of a prophet. They were preserved. Glory be to God. Now, I want us to look at number three. When, when you are destroying altars, raise altars. Some of you have been asking, woman of God, how do I raise altars? Raise altars. I'll still tell you how to raise altars, but you have to raise altars. Number one, individual altars. How can you raise a family altar if you have not raised your individual altar? So you must be connected to a prophet. Prophets have altars. Moses had altars. They have altars. Elijah raised altars. You see, you have to have an altar. There is no man of God in the Bible we hear that never raised an altar. Even God himself, the prophet of all prophets, he was able to raise an altar through his son, Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. His son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, even Noah, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 8, when he came out from the floods, he raised an altar. So every time you, are, you have to raise an altar. Now, there must be an individual altar. And this one I have taught in the beginning. Individual altar is you as a person. This is where you now start. There is no way I can go take an altar in my father's house if I've not raised my altar as a person. In every family in your home, there is the individual altar. In our home, 
in my place, my home, where I'm married, my own house, we have individual altars. My husband goes in a corner every day. Before he goes out to work, he goes there, kneels, and talks to God about the day. Before he sleeps, the same thing. When he wakes up in the middle of the night to make intercession, that is where he goes. All of us, there is a place we go. I also do the same. My children also do the same. Because where, whatever you raise an altar in your life, that one, the stronger it becomes, then you are able to raise the second altar in your life. Amen. So we have individual altar, and this is persons themselves. Before I lift an altar for my marriage, before we pray with my husband, there must be individual altars. Let him do his own with God. Where they talk, where God instructs him, what God commands him, let him fight his own battles in his own individual altar. So you have to start with your individual altar. And today I will talk to you, how do you raise your individual altar? Because altars have a voice. Amen. The more frequent you visit your altar, the more stronger it becomes. The more frequent you fail to visit, it becomes weaker. You see? And when it is weak, when you go there, it is like a dry ground where you pour water and the, pour, and the water just is swallowed by the dry land. So you find that God is not answered in your prayers like before because the land is empty. It has been dry. Now it is every small. That's, I have seen it in my life. When I started discovering the secret of an altar, I used to pray in my house before I sleep. Around 8 o'clock was my hour of prayer those days. I used to pray 8 o'clock in the evening. I would pray when my family have already finished eating or I'm just in the house. I will pray one hour. I will pray 30 minutes and then I will go sleep. Then I wake up at 3. Today I don't wake up at 3. I wake up at midnight. Yes, at 3. I used to wake those days at 3. Pray for one hour or even four. And then I, I sleep or I wake up, I go do my duties. And I discovered it has the strength. It is becoming the strength. Every time that altar was calling me, every time I'm in problem, I would dream myself I'm in that altar praying. Why? Because it is my place of meeting with God. Amen. Today I don't do that. Today I can pray anytime. But I have my specific hours per day, three times per day. I will not tell you which hours. But there are specific hours I go to my place of prayer. This time I'm matured. I'll read the word of God. I will read the word of God. I will start worshiping. And then I will find myself now I am praying using the word that I started using it. Amen. So my altar becomes stronger and stronger. There are people who don't have a specific place of prayer. When you are cooking, I also pray when I'm cooking, I sing. I can sing, worship, you know. I can worship when I'm, I'm in the kitchen. You, I am a noisemaker in the house. I sing. I speak in tongues, you see. I can pray anywhere, even in the latrine. I am in the toilet, washroom. I'm, I'm in my, my phone. I'm reading the word of God, praying and doing my business because it is part of me. But I have my specific place. Before I go to church, I kneel down. Before, my friend, when I come back, before I remove my clothes, I kneel down to give thanks to God. I have my place where we meet. Because an altar is a highway. Remember the times of Jacob? It was a highway. He saw the angels descending and ascending. It is not everywhere angels descend and ascend. I see, even sometimes I will see my husband. When you come on my bed, where I sit, at the back, my bed has a mark. Even my husband's side, it has mark. Because normally we will sit, study, and then kneel down and pray. It has a mark. It has a mark. That is our mark. Even if I buy a new bed, it will still be like that. So you must have a specific place where you go. You don't sleep without going. And this specific place, uh, we, we have a few things I'm going to mention here that raise altars of prayer in your home. 
in your home. Yourself as an individual person, raise an altar before you raise it at home. Number two, at home, where do you find altars? If you are married, make sure you have an hour or 30 minutes or 10 minutes where you sit down with your spouse if they are born again and if they are not born again, they are reasoning because there are others who don't reason. You have a time, you pray for your marriage. You look at, at your challenges in your marriage, you bring them before God. This is where you bring your businesses or ministries before God. This is where you bring your children before God. You mention them one by one. I hope I'm helping somebody. If you have a problem in your marriage, you deal with it. You tell God, we are giving you this. Now, when you pray together, the enemy may try in the beginning to fight you. But as you, I remember when we used to pray with my husband, we would even hold hands praying. Rambro, Sata, Brosha, Kaida, Maya, Totoboza, Kaiba, Koto, Boshia. I am praying, he is praying. Our hands would be separated. There was a force that used to come when we just got married. There was a force that was coming. We are separated. And then we would hold hands again. This time we are not holding hands. We would embrace one another. Kako, Kobo, Shaka. You know, pray in tongues. Power separating us. We fight you. We come against you. We destroy you. You know, these are powers. You fight them. You fight them until that power was defeated. And we were able to thank God. Sometimes we would pray and arrows are being thrown at us. And you see somebody doing like this. Pain. You are, my friend, until we overcome the battles of my side and the battles of his side. Foundational battles. We dealt with them. Glory be to God. This is where you pray together. This, even if you are not talking to one another, this is where you ask God for forgiveness. I tell mothers, I tell fathers that are married to spouses that are not born again, you can still make it to happen. You can have their picture and say, I'm praying with my husband and or my wife, and you are praying holding their picture or holding their dress or holding the pillow where your husband or your wife sleeps, or even he is drunk and asleep, you just hold him and speak in tongues. Father, as a husband as a, and a wife, I stand. Why? The Bible says that in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, let's go there. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, because there are people who can say, my husband is not saved, so what will the righteous do? So when you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, with altars, you allow me to speak because this is why altars are raised against personalities, against people, individual. And individuals, this is where your life is surrounded. Your marriage, your children, your occupation, your life, everything about your life is in that altar. Now, when you look in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 12, the Bible says, But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any man has a wife that believes not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. Let So you can hold and pray for your spouse. And the woman which has a husband that believes not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. You are drunkard husband. You are husband that is a robber, your husband that is a murderer, your husband that is into drugs, your husband that is visiting witches every day. The Bible says that for the unbelieving husband is sanctified, in other words, is set apart by the wife. And the unbelieving wife is sanctified, set apart by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. You cannot say because your son is a drunkard, you chase them out of the house. No, unless they are messing up, they are, they are destroying things, you know, and they are of age. Now, you don't say they are creating a loophole for you. The enemy is coming because my son, bra, bra, bra. No, no, no. The Bible says they are set aside for you. The moment you know that the enemy will never attack you, but a family member can come. And you are asked by God, just like God asked Balaam, who are these lodging with you? Who are these in your house? But your children, 
your spouse, they are yours. They are sanctified. You are the one that has made them to be sanctified. So you cannot say, my husband is not saved. My, bra my wife is, a, is not born again. We cannot pray with... There is an hour they will sleep. If they don't sleep, take anything they love, even their watches, pray with them. There are times my husband is away from me. He has gone maybe to Nairobi, and I feel I need to pray for him. I will either put on his coat or his flannel, yes, or I will take the pillow, or I will take the watch, and I will say, Father, this is a point of contact. This is my husband. Preserve him. I don't know why I feel troubled. I will speak in tongues. Why? And he will come and tell me, where well, you did good today. I felt you prayed for me. You prayed for me. Amen. But if the unbelieving depart, let them depart. A brother or a sister is not under, bond is not under bondage. In such cases, but God has called us to peace. Amen. So you can take anything for your spouse and pray for them. Even your children, you can use them as a point of contact. Because the DNA of your husband is in those children. It is not you. You don't have any DNA. What you have is your flesh. If it is this man praying for the woman, the flesh, the meat, the flesh, the flesh, in Kikui we say nyama, <laughs> the flesh of your children is a point of contact for your spouse. Hallelujah. I hope I'm, I'm telling you because these are things that I have learned through the hard way in Embu County. Amen. In Embu County, these are hard things that have taught me. So you have the individual prayer as a person, every one of us. Isaiah, let's go to Isaiah chapter 50, I think 51. Isaiah, let's go to Isaiah chapter 50. Let me get it there. The Bible says that he was called alone, 51. 51 and verse 2. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah that bore you. For I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. So you as a spouse, you and your spouse, you are called alone. You are healed. The Bible says in verse 1, Hearken to me, you that follow after righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock where you were healed and to the hole of the pit from where you were dug. You look upon Jesus. Me as Apostle Damaris, I am no longer Apostle Damaris before God. I am the Damaris of of God. I am the, the daughter of God. I will go to my father as Damaris. He called me by myself. He healed me from his rock. He called me by myself. He anointed me by myself. He assigned me by myself. He has blessed me by myself. So I have to pray for my life before I pray for my family. I have to pray for my life before I pray for my children. Because if my life is attacked, my children will suffer. My husband will suffer. So I better pray for myself. I surround myself and then I pray for my husband. Because without my husband, my children could not be there. They found us and they will get married. They will go to school. They always leave us, the two of us. So I better take care of this one. When I'm done, then I enter. The only time I can fail to pray for myself before I pray for others, it is if there is an alarm of emergency. I cannot pray for myself. I'll pray for my children or my, my husband if there is an alarm for, yes, emergency. The Bible says that, for I called him alone and blessed him and increased him alone. You will be increased and blessed and you are called alone. So you deal with your personal. Then you come to marriage, you deal with it. Then when you deal with the marriage, let me tell you, when you start dealing with your individual altar, the two of you, it will be easier to pray together as man and wife. Any challenge you will overcome. When you are able to raise an altar for you and your husband or you and your spouse, then it will be easier to meet it at the family altar. There is a family altar where we meet myself, my husband, and my children, and my house girl. Any house girl that will not accept to pray with me will not even sleep in that house. I would rather take her to a hotel. Pay and pay breakfast, and then in the morning she just goes. Because he who is rejecting my God, how will they serve me? You see? Yes, you have to involve your house girls. So that if they are wicked, you will know them. 
There are times we shall sit down as a family and pray. My relatives have come to visit me. I remember there is a time we were praying and I was all alone in the house with my house girl. My children were in school and my husband had gone somewhere and never was not able to come back on time. And he called me and said, I'm spending over. I've not finished what I came to do. And we were just praying, me, my house girl, she's, she was spiritual. She got married, thank God. She stayed with me for seven years and God gave her a husband. Now, and my, I had a nephew. We are just praying, praying innocent prayers. But the altar started speaking. My nephew started manifesting. My nephew started shouting. He started manifesting. We delivered him with my house girl. Yes, with my house girl, yes. She is part of my family. The family altar does not know who is who. It doesn't know who is who because all of you, your names are in that altar. Yes. When I am getting a house girl or somebody has come to spend the night in my family, we must pray when they enter in the house. I welcome them and I say, let us pray. Father, I thank you for my visitor. Upon the family altar, I receive this visitor. As this visitor stays in this house, I pray for peace and I pray for refreshment in Jesus' name. He, yes, my friend, the Bible says you invite them in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. If they come in the name of the Lord, the assignment if they are evil people shall not prevail. Amen. If they have come burdened, they will come out when they are glorious. They will come out when they are favored. I remember I have a late sister who used to come. I used to push her to come visit my house. And one time she came, her hair was cut into pieces. She looked miserable. When I saw her and she's older than me, I cried, but I didn't allow her to see my tears. I'm showing you about the power of a family altar in your house, not in the village, in the house. You as man, wife, or a single mother, a single father, but you have children, even you as an individual person. You see, that is where you pray for yourself, individual. You don't need to pray for marriage. You don't need to pray with marriage because there is no spouse. There is no family. Now, I remember when she came, I looked at her and I was moved greatly. And I saw this girl has been destroyed. I don't know where to start. And at the prayer uh, altar, we started praying. We, we welcomed her in our home in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. When she woke up in the morning, this is what she told me. She came crying, and she's big. Today she would be 50s. She came crying. She came crying. She said, oh, please, why couldn't you tell me I look like this? She didn't know all her time. She didn't know that her hair is cut sides and sides. She looked horrible. You know, she had a mark on the thigh. She didn't see it. She showed it to me, you know, is a mark, you know, enemy marks you at their pulpit, at their, not pulpit, at their altars. So I knew she's under strong arrest. So I started praying for her. Every night I would pray for her. She started becoming beautiful. We stayed with her for only two weeks, only two weeks. But I took her to the salon. She looked nice. I gave her clothes. And she was saying, in this house, I feel like I am a baby. I have slept like a baby. The moment she went home, everybody was saying, wow, you look beautiful. But now she was not there. Amen. Now she never used to come many times. Amen. So family altar speaks. Anybody come in? I have even ministers of the gospel that come. I have a mother I love. I have a mother I love, a friend. A friend. And it happened she traveled all the way from, from Israel. And uh, she is in Kenya, but she traveled for a mission from Israel on a Friday. And she's coming to preach for me on a Sunday. So she came on Sunday, Saturday. And she told me when she entered in my house, and she told me any time she comes in my house, she doesn't pray like other times. She comes and she just prays and she says, this woman has prayed, let me sleep. She rests. In the morning, she told me, well, I have rested, I have peace. I didn't even wake up to pray, but I could hear you pray. And I said, I stood in the gap for you. She was refreshed. I have seen it. 
Why? Because of the family altar. So this is where you lift a family altar. When how look at Psalms is Psalms 50. Look at Psalms. The Bible says that Psalms chapter 50 and verses 5. Jacob knew the power of an altar. Remember, even Isaac, even Isaac, he called his son. We shall go there. Family altar is very important. Psalms 50 and verses 5. Gather my saints together to me, those that have made a covenant, an agreement with me by sacrifice. Gather to me. Where is this scripture? Go to Genesis 49. This is where this scripture is coming from. Genesis 49. Genesis 49. Genesis 49. Before I was in 20. Okay. Genesis 49. This is what the Bible says. And Jacob called to his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather the place of altar. I have realized, get it or not, take it or not, every time we pray, I will not tell you what hour, but we pray in the evening. And if I will not see the angel of that altar, I will feel his presence. And every time we extend, waiting, waiting, you know, we want to, we are doing our own things. I will not feel that presence. Even when we pray, I will not. Why? Because he keeps time. He keeps time. He keeps time. He is the altar, the angel of the altar of that family. So if there are problems, he solves them. And I've realized when I have people coming in my house, if there is something they have that will destroy me, the angel appears. So I know there are things that have been removed from them. And people have testified that I came to that house. This was what was disturbing. By the way, I don't entertain members coming to my house. Even online people that are coming to Embu. I don't take them to the house. I take them to the office or I take them to the hotel. Why? My house is a place of family. Is not. You can bring somebody. Let me give you an example. One time, there is a son of mine that was needing deliverance, a young boy, and he never used to go to school. He would escape school, you know, and the mother would say, oh, my son is in school, but he's not in school. So it was a matter of concern to me. That is how I learned. So the boy comes, and as usual, my mother made some tea for him. And you know, he teenagers don't take tea. So I did some toast and some eggs. And I said, ah, now you can enjoy. And the boy finished. But I'm, and I was seeing him looking side, side. So I knew something is not right. So I started talking to him and asking him, why don't you go to school? Bra, 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 a lot of things. Then I said, would oh, you want to accept Jesus? The boy said, yes, but he's looking sides and sides. God did not open my eyes, so he knelt down. And thank God my husband was there. When we started praying, he started manifesting. Munadu, Munadu, I didn't know Munadu is what. I'm not a teenager. <laughs> my husband told me, he's asking what you are doing. So the boy started manifesting, and he was calling his army. And, and we finished delivering him. And he said, Mom, there are people who have come and they have said, and he was calling their names. They were saying, we are coming after you. I just took it for granted. Then we went to pray and then to sleep so that we wake in the middle of the night to pray. And there was a strange smell in my house, in my bedroom. That time I was not under the covering of my father. Otherwise, it would not have managed to come in. Where? Well, then, before I woke up, yes, then we slept. We woke up in the middle of the night to pray. But before we woke up, I heard the Lord tell me, pray. Your husband will be paralyzed. And I said, what? Will be crippled. I said, what? My, my husband also heard, son, pray. You'll be paralyzed. So my husband woke up, sat on the bed, and I was fearful. And I'm like, sweetheart, what is it? Because I've had... He said, I'm good. He doesn't tell me heavy things. He doesn't like me to be bothered in the head. I, he woke up. He's going to the washroom. He can't walk. I said, ah, it has happened. I said, God, I said, I pray. For three days, he couldn't stand. But finally, I won the battle. So from that day, I decided never, 
Never. I don't. I don't. There are pastors who bring washirikas in their homes. Their marriages scatter. Things happen. Please get me right. I'm talking about altars. And because I don't know about your story, I'm telling you about my story. Today they have tried, they have failed. Today I don't think there is anything they have not tried. But the God of my father, Apostle Johnson Suleiman, has always defended us. Amen. So the Bible says he called them. Gather yourselves today and hear you sons of Jacob. And hearken to Israel, your father. Two things. He said, gather, hear, gather, then hear. Every time you are called somewhere, don't talk here. What are they saying? Because they may say something to destroy you. Don't talk. Choose your words well. Don't even eat before you know why they are talking. Number three, the Bible says, gather yourselves together. Number one, gather. Number two, hear. So in family altars, you are gathered. You hear. Now, you remove your family altar. You take it also to your father's house. It's also an altar. But before you take it there, it must be here. Every time. There are times we gather every year in, my, in our church. Even this year they are coming. I have to tell them to come. I'm waiting for God's signal. And the Bible says that you sons of Jacob, you sons of so and so, the father of the house, not the mother of the house. If you are mother, a blessed mother, in chariots of fire, single mothers, we call them blessed mothers. If you are a blessed mother, a single mother, then you have a father. The children of so and so. Or you even call them by your name. The ch my children, the children of so and so. And the Bible says that the sons, number three, is the sons of Jacob. The children of my native, my children of my natural birth. My natural person. And the children of who I am today. In other words, the children of me, Mobi, Shanashia Mobi, if I use my name. But there is the Mobi that is now born again. It is the Mobi that is Israel with the revelation, with the covenant with the God. Jacob is the person just born. And that is why he was able to lie. That is why he was able to steal from his brother, his birthright. But the Israel, remember? When his name was changed, he was told, go to Esau. Go and make peace. Go and make peace. And he didn't go empty-handed. He carried livestock. I don't know whether you are getting me. Every person has two names. The name of the you. That's where you gather your family and say, you know what? You did this. I don't like it. You are doing this. I don't like it. You talk to them. You... But there is that one of Israel where you meet, not to condemn. Not to judge, but to pray. To pray. To worship. In my family altar, we worship. We, every one of them reads scripture. Even my house girls, those that do not know to read. You know, those that do not know to read, I excuse them. But all of them, they read the scriptures. Then we pray. They have a day, they have memorized their scripture. And after a week, I will ask them, the Monday, I will put them in my spirit. Monday, the scripture for Monday. I'm not dictating them. They are in my care. They are in our altar as man and wife, my husband and myself. So I have to nurture them. So that even when they go, this altar will still speak for them. Glory be to God. This is where they will hear my voice correcting them. This is where they will hear my husband correcting them. Have you ever asked yourself why your mother is dead or your mother is far or your mother is old, he doesn't, she doesn't make noise because mothers are the ones that make noise. I am one of them. They, do, they make noise, but they are not making noise now. But you still do something, you hear their voice telling you. You just feel this thing, my mother alinikanya. My mother warned me. My father warned me. Why? Because every day she used to tell you, don't do that. We don't do this. We hated them. But today... Today, I tell God, where my mother told me something, I neglected that. Forgive me. Why? Now I see the wisdom of my mother because I'm where she was at my age also. You see? So why are you seeing your spiritual, your pastor in your dreams, correcting you or telling you this is the direction because of the church altar? So even family altar, 
There are times my, my, my children will call me and they will say, Mom, I heard your voice calling me, but I didn't reply. I heard your voice telling me, don't go, don't, today, don't go to class. And if I will not go, I will hear something happened. Either somebody would have accused me, somebody's item got lost. My desk mate item got lost and I was nowhere to be blamed. Please, family altar speaks whether you like it or not. Even if they will depart from it, the altar will still speak. Amen? I hope you are getting me and what I'm saying. Apart from family altar, we have city altars. These are altars I have taught, city altars. In Embu County, I've lifted altars in the spiritual realm, in the physical realm. We also have nation altars, native altars, native, not only nation. I have altars I have made concerning me as a mugekoyo. Yes, I told God, what is Akikuyu pastors? It will not find me. What is the sons of Kikuyu will not find me. What is the Kikuyu women will not find me. You enter into, that's why we have the Jacob and Israel. Those are complicated things, but I have learned out of it. Amen. Because when I came to Embu, they said strangers cannot minister. They even call me Mokoyo. Mokoyo, I don't know. Mokoyo. Mokoyo. Pastor Mokoyo. Me, I don't know. Mokoyo, I don't know how to pronounce it in Kiembu. So I realized, aha, if you hear them asking, you are going to Pastor Damaris, that Kikuyu person, I started marking those words. I'm not saying all of them. Get me right. They will even say, they will tell people, Embu is not for Amkikuyu, is for Ambience, is not for Kikuyu. So I realized I have to make a covenant with my tribe in the spiritual realm. Yes, I started praying for the Kikuyu. Yes. And that's why even sometimes I would preach a whole service in Kikuyu. A whole service and I would lose people. My friend, I would lose Ah, next Sunday I would find like half have gone. But I continued until now they know. I would even sing Kikuyu songs. Not because I love Kikuyu more than another language, no. It is because I wanted to have a mark in the spiritual realm. I want that Kikuyu song to have a mark in the spiritual realm. I was ready to close, but I leave a mark in the spiritual realm. That another pastor who is a Kikuyu will come and, and succeed. Yes, I'm telling you the truth. So you have to do. If it is, you are in America, you are in, in Somalia, you are anywhere that they don't accept your language, either Luo, either Baluhia, Kamba, deal with it, covenant with it. Amen? No, I want you to know that the stronger, you have to be stronger than the altar that you are destroying. You cannot be weak with the altar that you are destroying. Amen? So I've written here that you must be stronger than the existing satanic altar. You must be stronger than the existing satanic altar. Now, God will grace me. Let's go to Genesis about family altar. Genesis 27, if I'm not wrong. Genesis 27, if I'm not wrong. Genesis chapter... 28, Genesis chapter 28. 27 is after that we are blessed. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said to him, you shall not take a wife of the daughters of the Canaan. Look at that. He called, Isaac called Jacob. Jacob called his sons, the 12 of them, excluding Joseph, you see. But he blessed Joseph. Joseph's present was not there. But he blessed J Joseph. He knew Joseph is alive. He knew because he knew one way or another, he knew the boy is alive. Because men of the spirit will know. Men of the spirit will know. Men of, there is one man, one lady, my son, my daughter came to church three weeks ago and said, Mom, no, the auntie. The auntie said, Mom, pray for me. I said, why? I asked why. I don't just pray prayers. I said, my cousin, my niece, gave birth and threw away the baby. We don't know where the baby is. 
I said, okay, thank you. Let us pray. If God will reveal to me, I'll let you know. I only tell that to my members because they know me. And uh, we just prayed. In fact, I didn't tell her that. I just told her, let us pray and know where the baby is. We started praying. I prayed. I said, Lord, my daughter has come. She has been faithful with the tithes and offerings. And she's been faithful in praying for me. And I said, she has a challenge. I talked to God like that. The granddaughter, you know, because that is the niece, the niece child is gone, is missing what is happening. So I saw the boy, the baby, putting his legs up crying, and it was in the, like, a sh not shrine, a shrubby place. So along the roads where people can see the baby. And I said, Father, let the baby be discovered by somebody. And then somebody, I saw a lady come, take the baby and put it in her hand. I said, the, ba the baby will come. She didn't cry anymore. She went. The next Sunday she comes and tells me, a woman brought this baby to me. So she gave her niece now, another niece, to take care of this. The mother is not known where she is, but the baby is in the hands of the mother, uh, of the sister, of the, of the niece to that lady. And they have all of them were shirikas, apart from the, mothers of, the mother of that boy. So I looked at the boy, I prayed, I dedicated him to God. And this boy is not bothering people. Even they said, they said this boy is so quiet, so calm. And I said, hallelujah. You see, gather, mm -hmm. gather, praise the name of the Lord. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said to him, you shall not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Go, arise, go to Pedanam, Pedanaram, to the house of Bethel, your father, mother's father, and take your wife from there, of the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. He obeyed the instruction. He obeyed the instruction. Jacob called and blessed. He blessed him as a father. I have always told people, if you have both parents, be a blessing to them. Be a blessing to them. Bless them. Even if they are wicked, bless them. Even if they are bad, bless them. Because they carried you, they birthed you, they took you to school. Leave it to God, leave it to God, bless them. When you look at Jesus, they had their Passover with the disciples. He said, we are meeting in the upper room. Go, let the upper room be prepared. Go ask the owner to give you that room. Let it be prepared. Other times they were eating together, talk and laugh, being rebuked. But this time, it was a serious matter. They were told, go prepare, we shall meet there. He knew it is the last supper. And if you listen and you, you read that scripture, well, the Bible says that, that until it shall be broken, until it shall be broken. In other words, I am the bread of life. I am not yet broken. I am not yet broken, but I'll be broken today. Yes. He said, I am giving you this. Do this in remembrance of me. Why was he saying like that? It is because he knew that night he is going to go through another problem. Or the next day he is going to go through crucifixion. He ate together. He gathered. And he said, one of you is not clean. And he said, get out. Go. Go. And do that which you have been told to do. And Judas got up. Judas was a cousin. First class cousin of Jesus. He got up. The spirit entered him. And it went. And he went. And betrayed Jesus. Glory be to God. He betrayed Jesus. So he was able to talk to Peter. He said, Peter, you see. If you read the last scriptures before Jesus died, the Bible says in Luke 20, in Luke 22 and 33, 31 and 33, the Bible is telling us very well what Jesus told, that Satan has desired to sift you like wheat, but I've prayed for you. <laughs> I've prayed for you. Eh? This is what he says. And he said to Simeon, he said, Simeon, Simeon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may swift you as wheat. You see? As wheat. But I have prayed for you that you fail, faith, your faith fail not. 
And when you are, you are converted, strengthen your brethren. And he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell you, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before, uh, before that you shall thrice deny that you know me. <laughs> These are things you have to look at. Amen. These are things you have to look at. When you look in verses 11, and you shall say to the of the house, the master says to you, where is the, the guest chamber where I shall eat? You know, Luke 22, 11. Where I shall eat, where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples. And he shall show you a large upper room furnished. There make ready. And they went and found as he had said to them, and they made ready the Passover. This was gathering. And when the hour, this was the family of Jesus. Amen. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the 12 disciples with him. 12 disciples. Never say they were 11. They were 12. They will tell you. Even the enemy will tell you. But Judas died. Tell the enemy that the Bible says that Paul, when he was going to persecute the church, Jesus appeared to him. I don't mention Matthew, the disciples chose for him, for themselves, but the 12th disciple was after, after Judah was, 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 Judah was not just a disciple. He became a disciple, but when the spirit of the enemy entered in him to betray Jesus, he's not a disciple, but they are 12. Yes. Jesus appeared to Paul and said, Paul, Paul, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? The Bible says, has my eyes, why are you not saying I'm, an, I'm not an apostle? Has my eyes not seen the Lord? For me, Apostle Damaris, to be called apostle, it is not by anybody. It is not by under somebody. It is not by somebody telling me you are an apostle from today. My eyes saw him and he sent me to deliver the lands and to set the captives free and to raise a new generation that will conquer sin and fear evil. That's my assignment. So the Bible says, and when said he to them, with the desire of desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. This is the family altar. This is where there was exchange. This is where there was batons. This is where, even when he was coming, the Holy Ghost was coming, they were told, gather in the upper room. My family, gather in the upper room. Allow me to finish. For I say to you, I will not anymore eat therefore until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. I will not eat it again until all of us, we go to heaven. There will be the, the table, the holy communion table, the bread, the wine. Hmm, what are you saying? And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it amongst yourself. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fast of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. Divide unto you. He didn't take it. Divide unto you. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave to them saying, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you. But behold, the hand of him that betrays me is with me on this table. And truly the Son of Man goes as it was determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to inquire among themselves which of them is it was that should do this thing. And there was also a strife among them, which of them should betray. Mm -hmm. And he said to them, the kings of the kingdoms exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But you shall not be so, but he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he that is chief as he that does deserve. He was at the family altar commissioning them, speaking to them. That's why you should value the altar of a family. For whether it's greater, he that sits at meat, or he that serves is not he that eats at meat, but I am among you as he that serves. You are they which have continued with me in my temptations. I appoint to you a kingdom as my father has appointed to me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on the throne judging the 12 tribes of Israel. 
the tribes will be judged by the two of disciples. Hmm. And the Lord said, Simeon, Simeon, you see what I'm saying? Go, you know, family altar. If you are married, your husband is born again. He is the priest. Let him bless his family. Let him bless his family on the altar. When your children are going to school at the family altar, wake up, pray for them. Your day is blessed. No evil shall come near you. You will be favored both by God. You will be favored by God. You will be favored before your teachers, before students. Speak to them at the family altar. Do you have challenges as a family? Sit at the family altar. It's not in the bedroom. Sit at the family altar. Ask them what is your problem. What is happening? Let them open up. As they speak, the family altar will speak for them. Let them kneel down. Pray for them. Glory be to God. I'm giving you what God has taught me. Because family altar will speak. Even if they will not be delivered. Even if tomorrow they will still continue. The family altar have registered your prayers. Even if you will pray in your individual prayer altar. Even if you will pray as man and wife. Father, our daughter, our son. You know, my friends, this is what will keep you. May the good God bless you. You are there, you want to receive Jesus Christ. I want you to repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I come to you. And as Apostle Damaris is praying for salvation for me, I repent my sins. Write my name in the book of life and burn the book of death in the name of Jesus Christ. From today I'm born again. Jesus is Lord. Congratulations for accepting Jesus. It is a good decision that you have made. May God give you a pastor. And may God keep you and sustain you and give you a church where you will be nourished. If you are in Embu, you have received Christ through me, come to Emco Hall so that I can pastor you and I will feed you according to the word of God. I want to pray for you, partner. I want to pray for you, viewer. I want to pray for you that is a member of this online. I want to pray that God will show you his mercy. I want to pray that the grace of God will still continue over your life. And as usual, I stand with the word of God in Psalm 67 and verse 6. The Bible says, Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless you. This is our scripture for this month of February in our blessing. May God bless you. May your field not be barren. May your field be fruitful. May your fruit field also prosper. And may your field be full of fruits. And let God rejoice in your abundance. And it is in Jesus' name I pray for you. Please continue subscribing to my YouTube, Apostle Damaris Mumbi Kekodo. Comment, share, and also pray for me, even as you are supporting me. May the good God, remember when I'm saying supporting is being a blessing, so that the word I'm teaching you shall also serve you. Amen. And always remember that where there is a prophet, there is a testimony. And by the hand of apostles, the Bible says there are signs, wonders, and miracles. And that is your portion this week in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen.